we're going to talk about some related rate problems. And so to start, we're going to take some derivatives using the chain rule, right? And the last couple of times we've worked on our implicit derivatives. And today we're going to be taking the derivative of lots of expressions and equations with respect to time. And so I'll start out by taking the derivative of y with respect to t. And so the derivative of y with respect to t is just going to be dy dt. The derivative of y to the third with respect to t, okay, the derivative of a thing to the third is going to be 3 times that thing squared times the derivative of that thing. The derivative of y with respect to t is going to be dy dt. Okay, x squared plus y squared. Okay, that is definitely something that we're going to be taking the deriv derivative of with respect to time here in a couple minutes. So that's going to be 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt. derivative of t with respect to t, well, that's like the derivative of x with respect to x, is just 1. And the derivative of x times y with respect to t, okay, this is a product, so we're going to have to use the product rule. So I'm going to leave x the same and take the derivative of y. I'm going to leave y the same and multiply by the derivative of x with respect to t. So a lot of these problems we're going to be solving today are going to be like, well, I know a lot of y'all are in, in a really good physics class, but, you know, I took the type of physics where, you know, you kind of had an equation, everything but one, every item but one was given to you, and you solve for the last. And that's pretty much what we're going to have here, except we're going to have to take the derivative of an equation to get to that point. But we're pretty much going to have almost everything given to us, and we'll solve for the last thing. Next time, we're going to look at some more complicated examples where you have to do, like, maybe a couple of layers of analysis. But, you know, for now, it's going to be pretty straightforward. So find dy dt when y equals negative 2, given that dx dt equals 2. So we need to take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to t. So we're going to take the derivative of x with respect to t, and that's dx dt. And I'm going to add... 3y squared dy dt. And the derivative of 8 with respect to t is going to be 0. Okay. We know that dx dt equals 2. y is equal to negative 2. And we're interested in finding dy dt. Okay, so this is 2 plus 3 times 4 is 12 dy dt equals 0. So I'm going to say that 12 dy dt equals negative 2. Therefore, dy dt equals negative 1 sixth. Here we've got one. c squared equals x squared plus y squared. And, you know, those of you that took calculus AB last year know that this is, you know, headed towards the ladder sliding down a wall problem. And so why don't you all try this one on your own? Okay, I'll freeze the screen. You can check your answer against mine. Don't worry. Yeah. I always like those because the derivative of the length of the ladder with respect to time. It's like, oh, it's really easy. Okay.
so go. I got ninety two over twenty six. Well, yeah, you can you can figure out Z based on the fact that Z squared equals X squared plus Y squared. And yeah, anybody that's taken the a SAT or the ACT recently should know that if X equals 5 and Y equals 12, then Z is going to equal 13. Or maybe you were in my pre-cal class last year and you know that if X is 9 and Y is 40, then Z is going to be 41. Oh, yeah. Every day last year, 9, 40, 41. <laughs> the one thing you learned last year. All right, well. Okay, oftentimes... The first step of solving these related rate questions is to take the derivative of some geometry formula. Now, yesterday, in my A-day section, I went through and did all of these, and it took a really long time, and it wasn't exciting. So I'm going to just save you the hassle and just leave that, you know, for you to look at. Let's just kind of maybe zoom in on a couple of them and see, see how it was done. All right, here's a couple of selected ones. Like area of a circle, that, that one seems to come up quite a bit. And area of a circle is pi r squared. And I, I believe that that's pretty much the one geometry formula that you're expected to know on the AP exam. For, say, volume of a sphere, that 4 thirds pi r to the third, I'll show you why that's true later on in the year. But you're not expected to know that. They give that to you in the statement of the problem. So, you know, if we needed to take the derivative of area of a circle with respect to time, We'd say that dA dt equals, okay, I'll take the derivative of pi r squared, that's 2 pi r, and then multiply by the derivative of r with respect to t. All right, then you could also see that, you know, maybe we've got some sort of trig situation like y equals sine theta, and so we could take the derivative of that with respect to time, and dy dt would be cosine theta d theta dt. All right, that's enough of that. And so... We're going to start, before we actually solve any problems, we're going to translate, you know, a sentence from English into calculus. Because that's, you know, another one of the steps that we're going to have to do. Is we're going to have to take the statement of the problem, turn it into a calculus problem, and then solve the calculus problem. So the radius of a circle is growing at a rate of 3 inches per second. So I'm going to say, okay, if the rate is 3 inches per second, the rate of change of the radius with respect to time is equal to positive 3 because it's growing. And if it was getting smaller by 3 inches per second, we would say that that derivative was negative 3. So why don't you all fill in the rest of them, see if you get what I'm saying. So there you can see mine. Just make sure that if something's getting smaller, we want that rate to be negative. Question was, do we need to worry about, you know, the square centimeters per hour? And not in this class. Basically, the units take care of themselves, is what I would say about the units. Uh, there will be times where we need to concern ourselves with the units of measure. The problem will explicitly state, indicate units of measure. But that's never the hardest part of a question, which is what I would say. And when we need to approximate the value of a derivative using data from a table, it's units of y divided by units of x. You know, it's, it always kind of, it just takes care of itself. It's never been an issue for, for my people in the past. All right, so here we go. We've got a real related rate question. So a balloon is being inflated. Air is blown into the balloon at a rate of two cubic feet per second. How fast is the radius of the balloon changing when the radius is 3 feet? Okay, so we're assuming a spherical balloon. So, the volume, because we have air being blown into the, rate, into the balloon at a rate of 2 cubic feet per second. That's a rate of change in volume. So I need the volume formula for a sphere, which I will tell you is 
v equals 4 thirds pi r to the third. And so in order to use the, the fact that the rate of change of volume is 2 cubic feet per second, we need to get the rate of change of volume. So we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. Okay, so the 3 is going to come down for the power rule, and so that'll be 4 pi r squared dr dt. If you notice, like, wait a second, 4 pi r squared, that's the surface area of a sphere, you know, because you were a real geometer a few years ago. Well, you'd be right, and there, there is something to that intuition, but, you know, we'll talk about that at a different time. So, I think at this point, I am ready to plug stuff in and find the rate of change of the radius of the balloon. So, dv dt is 2 equals 4 pi r is 3, so I'm going to take 3 and square it, and then dr dt. And then in order to solve for dr dt, we're going to divide by 4, we're going to divide by pi, and we're going to divide by 3 squared, which is 9. So that's going to be 2 over 36 pi. Now, the units of this thing are going to be just, say, the units of radius divided by the units of time. Okay, so that's going to be radius was 3 feet. So feet per second. Radius of the balloon is 3 feet. That means that the diameter is 6. That's a big balloon. <laughs> but, but not quite like hot air balloon size. It's, it's for a weather balloon. Well. Yeah, sure, a weather balloon. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Next, we've got a square, and its side lengths are shrinking. All right. You know, maybe you're the type of person that it helps you to draw a figure. Yes, because it's, it's a square, and it's going to remain a square. So, okay, I'm going to label it side length x, side length x. Excuse that, I had a brief interruption. All right, so, yes, okay, if the side lengths are shrinking at a rate of two centimeters per second, well, the rate of change of x with respect to t will be negative two. How fast is the area of the square changing when the area is 49 square centimeters? Okay. Well, I need the area. We're interested in how fast that's changing, so I'm gonna need to take the derivative of it with respect to time. So I've got dA dt is equal to 2x times dx dt. Okay, so I'm going to plug in everything I know. I've got dx dt equals negative 2. So I've got dA dt is equal to 2 times x times negative 2. Okay, but then it's like, wait, what is x? Yeah, so you go back to that, that piece of information that you were given but you didn't use the area of the square is 49 square centimeters. Okay, well, if this is 49, that's only going to happen when x is 7. Okay, so I've got that's equal to 2 times 7 times negative 2 is going to be negative 28. Okay, the units, if you needed them, would be the units of area divided by the units of time. So the units of area will be square centimeters, and the units of time that we're using right now are seconds. So it's square centimeters per second. Okay, here we've got ourselves a pre-response question from the 1994 Calculus AB exam. I believe you might have actually been allowed a scientific calculator for this one, but we'll just get an exact answer. Okay, the circle is inscribed in the square as shown in the figure above. As the circumference of the circle is increasing at a constant rate of 6 inches per second. There we go. As the circle expands, the square expands to maintain the condition of tangency. And see, see how they gave you, they even gave you circumference and area. So, I mean, this is not a geometry test, right? It's a calculus test. So they're... They don't want anybody to not be able to solve the problem because of a lack of geometry knowledge. 
Hey, I trust that y'all know those two formulas, but just in case you forgot, they're, they're there to help you out. Okay, find the rate at which the perimeter of the square is increasing. All right, well, what did they give us? They gave us the circumference is increasing at a constant rate of six inches per second. So what we know is that the derivative of circumference with respect to time is equal to six. Okay, so let's look at the perimeter. What is an expression for the perimeter in terms of what we've got here? Yeah, it's going to be, okay, so each side length is 2r, so the total perimeter is going to be 8r. Okay, and we want to find the rate at which the perimeter is increasing. Okay, so that's going to be dp dt. And that's going to be 8 times dr dt. We don't know dr dt. Okay, so what would be a way that I could find dr dt? I'm going to have to go into some other formula. Yeah, so I'm going to take the derivative of the formula for circumference, set it equal to 6, and hopefully find dr dt. Bless you. All right. So over here, I've got... Well, if c equals 2 pi r, then dc dt would be 2 pi dr dt. Perfect. So I've got dr dt equals 1 over 2 pi multiplied by dc dt. And now dc dt is 6, so it's going to be 6 divided by 2 pi or 3 divided by pi. Now that I, yeah, now that I have dr dt is 3 divided by pi, that's 8 times 3 divided by pi. Okay, that's an exact answer. Okay, indicate units of measure. Okay, so let's think. What would be the units of measure for perimeter? It would be whatever, yeah, it would be inches. And then the units of time that they're giving me is seconds. So it's inches per second. Okay, for part B. At the instant when the area of the circle is 25 pi square inches, find the rate of increase in the area enclosed between the square and the circle. Indicate units measure. All right. So... They're giving us when the area of the circle is 25 pi square inches. Okay, that must be, I mean, need to do something with that. That's basically telling me when r equals 5. Okay. So, over here, area of the circle is 25 pi. That is telling me that r equals 5. Okay. Now, the area enclosed... It's an interesting thing. So the area enclosed is going to equal, well, the area of the square minus the area of the circle. Which is going to be, okay, so this is 2r and that's 2r. So the area of the square is going to be 2r times 2r is 4r squared minus... The area of the circle is pi r squared. Okay. If you wanted, you could factor out the r squared and call that 4 minus pi multiplied by r squared since 4, pi, 4 minus pi is still just a real number. Um, but it won't really make much difference, so I'm just not going to. So the rate of change of the enclosed area is going to be... 8r dr dt minus 2 pi r dr dt. Okay. Now we already have the rate of change of the radius with respect to time. That hasn't changed. It, still, the whole time that we've been talking about this question, the circumference is still expanding at a constant rate of 6 inches per second. That has not stopped. It is still expanding. Okay. 
So meaning that the rate of change of the radius with respect to time is still 3 divided by pi. Okay, so this is going to be 8 times r is 5 times dr dt is 3 over pi minus, in this case, 2 pi r is 5, so that's 10 pi times dr dt. And, yeah, we could definitely simplify this a little bit, but this is the correct answer. This is an exact value of the rate of change. And if we needed the units of measure, okay, we'd say it's the units of area, which is going to be square inches, divided by the units of time, which is seconds. Okay, so that's square inches per second. Okay, the last item I've got for you is from the 1988 BC exam. And so the figure represents an observer watching a balloon as it rises from point C. The balloon is rising at a constant rate of 3 meters per second. Okay, that means to me that dy dt equals 3. Observer is 100 meters from point C, meaning that the derivative of this AC is going to be zero. I don't know if that's going to be relevant, but that's not going to be changing. Okay, find the rate of change in X at the instant when Y equals 50. Okay, well, rate of change in X. Just thinking about what, what is going to be true here? Okay, what's always going to be true is 100 squared plus y squared equals x squared. Okay, I'll take the derivative of that to get the rate of change of x. So 2y dy dt equals 2x dx dt. Right, at the instant when y equals 50, we've got 100 times dy dt equals 2 times x which I'll have to solve for in a second, and dx dt, which is what we're interested in. Okay, right here, x, okay, we're going to have to actually solve for x. So 100 squared is 10,000. Plus y squared is going to be 2,500 equals x squared. So x squared equals 12,500, which is... That's 125 times 100. Okay, 125 is not a square number, but it's kind of close. So in this case, x is going to be the positive 1. It'll be 550 root 5. Okay, just had to check that arithmetic there for a second. All right, so now when I'm solving for dx dt, I'm going to divide both sides by 100 root 5. So... I'll have 3 over the square root of 5, right? Because the hundreds are going to cancel off. And it didn't ask for... didn't ask for the units of measure, so I'm good now. Find the rate of change in the area of the triangle at the instant when y equals 50. Okay. Well, the area equals 1 half times y times 100. 1 half based on height. Okay, so that's 50y. Now, if I want the derivative of the area with respect to time, that's going to be 50 times the derivative of y with respect to time, which is going to be 50 times 3 is 150. And then for part C, theta. Hmm. Okay, you could use tangent, right, since we already calculated the rate of change of x with respect to t. But did anybody have a better idea? I'm going to use, uh, oh, no, I mean, I mean sine. Uh, I am going to use tangent, okay, right? Because you want to use as many constants as possible. So I'm going to use tangent of theta equals y divided by 100. Therefore, secant squared theta d theta dt equals 1 one hundredth of dy dt. 
All right? And so d theta dt equals, okay, dy dt is 3, 3 one hundredths, multiply both sides by cosine squared theta. Okay, and so at this point, what I need to find is cosine of theta, and then I'm going to square it. So cosine of theta, I've got x, I've got y, I've got 100. So really, in order to get cosine of theta, I just need x, and that's 50 root 5. And so this is 3 divided by 100 times cosine adjacent over hypotenuse squared. And that's going to be a suitable number for our purposes. And that's going to be all I've got for you today. Next time we'll have some more complicated related rate examples.